What's going on everyone? I'm here in a notebook that I set up to allow us to explore positional numeral systems. The capabilities of this notebook extend beyond bases 10 and 2, but we'll stick with decimal and binary for this video. The link to this notebook is publicly available so you can experiment with it yourself. Link in the description. Let me show you how this works. We choose a number in decimal form at the top, and then we have the ability to compare two numerals with different bases. The cool thing here is that we can change the number at the top or either one of the bases, and the tables update in real time. All right, let's see how these tables work. We'll choose a higher number. The text above the table tells us that in base 10, the number 12 is expressed using the numeral 1, 2. And that's not surprising because base 10 is what we are used to. For the base 2 table though, the text tells us that in base 2, the number 12 is expressed using the numeral 1, 1, 0, 0. When we are reading numerals, it's important that we do it digit by digit. And this is because in different bases, the digits have different meanings. The position of each digit in the numeral determines the value each digit represents. This is why these numeral systems are called positional numeral systems. The tables are meant to give us a breakdown of each numeral and illustrate this fact. The first row in the table lists out the digits and the second row shows us the corresponding place of each digit. The place of each digit is why the position matters. And the place is also where the base becomes important. The place in each position is determined by the base. To generate the places, we take the base and start with the power zero on the right side. As we move one position to the left, we increment the power by one, and this is how the places are generated. The third row shows us the value for each position. To get the value, we multiply the digit times the place. Once we have all the values, we just add them up to get the number we are representing. This process is the same no matter which base or number we're dealing with. Math is always dependable. The sum of the values in the value row tells us which number we are encoding. Remember, encode just means represent something in coded form, and numerals encode numbers. Think back to the tally example in the numeral versus number video. We saw that unary numeral systems use a single symbol that simply repeats as we count. But when we use positional numeral systems, we put objects into groups and count the groups instead. This is how we know how many objects we are representing. This also makes it so that we can represent numbers like the number 12 without actually writing out 12 symbols or tallies. The groups we count here are determined by the base and we call them places. In base 10, we have the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. The places go up by powers of 10. But in base two, we have the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, eights place, sixteens place, and so on. The powers are powers of two. Let me show you what I mean with a larger number. We'll go with 127. In base 10, the number 127 is expressed using the numeral 127. This numeral represents the number 127 because the values add up to 127. We have 1 100, 2 10s, and 7 1s. In base 2, the number 127 is expressed using the numeral 1111111. This numeral also represents the number 127 because the values add up to 127. We have 164, 132, 116, 18, 14, 12, and 11. Okay, check this out. There's something important here. When we say the number 127, we are using the decimal numeral to represent the number, and we are saying how many are in each group. This is why we need to know the base when we read a numeral. For example, it would be wrong to say that the number 127 is expressed in base two as 1,111,111. In base two, the places are in powers of two. One other important piece of information the base tells us is how many symbols are available for each digit. In decimal, we have 10 symbols, 0 through 9, and this determines how many ones we can represent in the ones place before we get our first group of 10. Let me show you what I mean. We'll start at 0 and count up. 
When we get to 10, we run out of symbols for the ones place. And in this case, we carry over to the next group. Because we have a group of 10, we can just say that we have a group of 10. And this process continues. Each time we count up to a group of 10, we carry over to the next place. Rewind the video and pay close attention to how this works in base two. The groups are in powers of two, so the values carry over more frequently as we count up. And for this reason, we only have two symbols, zero and one. This carryover process is a big deal, and one of the primary reasons positional numeral systems are so widely used today. The carryover is a feature that allows us to create algorithms for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. This is pretty huge. Humans figured this out and went with it. Come check out this notebook yourself and give this a try. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. In the next video, we'll look at the second part of this notebook, which lists out all the bases from base two all the way up to base 36. There are a few awesome patterns that I know you'll wanna see. So I'll see you over in the next video.